Oh, I got better. That was part of the compromise. You see, when Zeus killed me, my father Apollo got very upset. He couldn't take out his anger on Zeus directly. The king of gods was much too powerful. So Apollo took revenge on the makers of lightning bolts instead. He killed some of the elder Cyclopses. For that, Zeus punished Apollo, quite severely. Finally, to make peace, Zeus agreed to make me a god of medicine, with the understanding that I wouldn't bring anyone else back to life. Sclepes, his eyes filled with uncertainty. And yet here I am, giving you the cure. Because you realize how important this is, Piper said. You're willing to make an exception. Yes. Reluctantly, Asclepius handed Piper the vial. At any rate, the potion must be administered as soon as possible after death. It can be injected or poured into the mouth, and there's only enough for one person. Do you understand me? He looked directly at Leo. We understand, Piper promised. Are you sure you don't want to come back with us, Asclepius? Your guardian is out of, commi guardian is out of commission. You'd be really helpful on board the Argo, too. Asclepius smiled wistfully. The Argo. Back when I was a demigod, I sailed on the original ship, you know. Uh, to be a careful air adventurer again. Yeah, Jason muttered. Carefree. But alas, I cannot. Zeus will already be quite angry with me for helping you. Besides, the Guardian will reprogram itself soon. You should leave. Asclepius rose. Best wishes, demigods. And if you see my father again, please give him my regrets. Leo wasn't sure by what that meant, but they took their leave. As they passed through the waiting room, the statue of Hygieia was sitting on a bench, pouring acid on her face and singing, Twinkle, twinkle, little star, while her golden snake gnawed at her foot. The peaceful scene was almost enough to lift Leo's spirits. Back on the Argo, too, they gathered in the mess hall and filled in the rest of the crew. I don't like it, Jason said, the way Asclepius looked at Leo. Ah, uh, he just sensed my heart sickness. Leo tried for a smile. You know, I'm dying to see Calypso. That's so sweet, Piper said. But I'm not sure that's it. Percy frowned at the glowing red vial that sat in the middle of the table. Any of us might die, right? So we just need to keep the poison ha potion handy. Assuming that only one of us dies, Jason pointed out. There's only one dose. Hazel and Frank stared at Leo. He gave them a look like... Knock it off! The others didn't see the full picture. To storm or fire, the world must fall, Jason told Leo. In Olympia, Nike had warned that one of the four demigods present would die, Percy, Hazel, Frank, or Leo. Only one name overlapped those two lists, Leo. And if Leo's plan was going to work, he couldn't have anybody else close by when he pulled the trigger. His friends would never accept his decision. They would argue. They would try to save him. They would insist on finding another way. But this time, Leo was convinced there was no other way. Like Annabeth had always told them, fighting against prophecy never worked. It just created more trouble. He had to make sure this war ended once and for all. We have to keep our options open, Piper suggested. We need, like, a designated medic to carry the potion. Somebody who can react quickly and heal whoever gets killed. Good idea, Beauty Queen, Leo lied. I nominate you. Piper blinked. But Annabeth is wiser. Hazel can move faster on Aryan. Frank can turn into animals. But you've got heart. Annabeth squeezed her friend's hand. Leo's right. When the time comes, you'll know what to do. Yeah, Jason agreed. I have a feeling you're the best choice, Pipes. You're going to be here with us to the end. Whatever happens, storm or fire. Leo picked up the vial. Is everyone in agreement? No one objected. Leo locked eyes with Hazel. You know what needs to happen. He pulled the chamois cloth from his tool belt and made a big show of wrapping up the physician's cure. Then he presented the package to Piper. Okay, then, he said. Athens tomorrow morning, gang. Be ready to fight some giants. Yeah, Frank murmured. I know I'll sleep well. After dinner broke up, Jason and Piper tried to waylay Leo. They wanted to talk about what happened with Asclepius, but Leo evaded them. I gotta go work on the engine, he said which was true. Once in the engine room, with only Buford the Wonder Table for company, Leo took a deep breath. He reached into his pool belt and pulled out the actual vial of the physician's cure, not the trick of the mist version that he'd handed to Piper. Buford blew steam at him. Hey man, I had to! Buford activated his holographic hedge. Put some clothes on! 
look, it's got to be this way, otherwise we'll all die. Buford made a plaintive squeal, then clattered on the cor into the corner to sulk. Leo stared at the engine. He'd spent so much time putting it together. He'd sacrificed months of sweat and pain and loneliness. Now the Argo II was approaching the end of its voyage. Leo's whole life, his childhood with Tia Clidia, his mother's death in that warehouse fire, his years as a foster kid, his months at Camp Half-Blood with Jason and Piper, all of it would culminate tomorrow morning in one final battle. He opened the access panel. Festus's voice creaked over the intercom. Yeah, buddy, Leo agreed. It's time. More creaking. I know, Leo said. Together to the end. Festus squeaked affirmatively. Leo checked the ancient bronze astrolabe, which was now fitted with the crystal from Agigia. Leo could only hope it would work. I will get back to you, Calypso, he muttered. I promised on the river Styx. He flipped a switch and brought the navigation device online. He set the timer for 24 hours. Finally, he opened the engine's ventilator line and pushed inside the vial of the physician's cure. It disappeared into the vents of the ship with a decisive thunk. Too late to decide. Turn back now, Leo said. He curled up on the floor and closed his eyes, determined to enjoy the familiar hum of the engine for one last night.